It's the new year and you want to start off with a bang. In this video, I'm going to give you a list of powerful and useful weapons that you want to have in your arsenal. And believe me, these are going to do it for you. Once good folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video coming at you with a list of must have weapons to start off your 2024. And of course, with the recent update, there's been a lot of new players and returning players. And trust me, they're so confused. Not only with the modding system and all that, but all the new stuff that we have to use, especially weapons. And some of those interesting weapons are incarnates, because that's the thing that confuses them the most. Incarnate weapons are evolving weapons that you can buy from Cavalero once you built up your standing in the Zeremen. As you can see here, you have your blueprints. These blueprints are for your vanilla incarnate weapons, because in 2023, we got introduced to incarnate adapters. What are these adapters? Think of them as an upgrade that you can attach to existing weapons and turn them into evolving weapons, aka incarnates. Not all weapons have access to this, but only a select few. I do have a tier list which showcases what incarnate weapons that you should prioritize every time you see them, because these incarnate adapters come in a rotation every week. Now, of course, how to get access to these adapters? Simple. You must have access to Steel Path. That's it. Regular Path, Steel Path. You get it. And you've completed your Daviri quest, you can now do the circuit in Steel Path. Because in Steel Path, you get access to these incarnate adapters every week. And you can only pick two every week. So definitely use that list to see what is worthwhile. And if you're watching this video during this week, definitely get yourself the Latron and the Strun. Okay, here we are in the Simulacrum to demonstrate all of the weapons that will be showcased in this video. Of course, I'm going to be using my weapon test dummy here because what else is he good for? No Sentinel and no Arcanes. And of course, no helmet abilities whatsoever. To start off with a bigger bang, I'm going to give you the best one that you want to have right away whenever you see it in the circuit rotation. The Torrid Incarnate. Ask anybody, even people who haven't even played the game, they're like, yeah, definitely get the Torrid. The weapon is innate toxin, so that means it gives you some flexibility in modding. The evolutions are simple. Get this, get this, and then get this. So let's show you how this weapon works. You don't even need to hit headshots. Doink, doink, fully incarnate charged. Activate incarnate mode, and yeah, it's a beam weapon that chains to enemies. And mind you, these are 195 Corrupted Heavy Gunner in the Steel Path modifier. That was your basic Viral Hunter Munitions loadout, one elemental mod. Base damage, faction damage, and then the rest of the juicy stuff that you need to have to deal giga damage. Of course, there is the Corrosive version, where I just put an electric mod, and now it's Corrosive. Charging Karnan, activating Karnan mode, big damage. Now, this is even way more damage than the Hunter Munitions build, because these enemies are weak to Corrosive. However, the Hunter Munitions build is better off for damage over time so you can kill off stragglers so you don't necessarily have to focus your main damage on each enemy moving on to the latron incarnate this weapon is disgustingly good like really good evolutions this one this one the last one you can use two different versions of course from more versatility you can go with this evolution however if you want some additional utility and armor stripping you go with this one there's so many different ways you can build this weapon so i highly recommend you to check out my latron build video you have your corrosive build and you have your Hunter Munitions build, the go-to. The only difference is you need to hit headshots to charge the Incarnate mode. And once you get the Incarnate mode, shots explode and ricochet. And now with the Incarnate mode active and my Arcane's active, yeah, destruction. You can even shoot on the ground and it will ricochet into enemies. And also remember, this is an open map. Usually if you're playing in Warframe, you have corridors and very narrow hallways. So this is going to ricochet off of all of those surfaces. And now we're on the Burstin. This little thing is an LMG. Evolution this one, that one, and this one. Corrosive, Hunter Munitions. Let's do the Corrosive build. To charge Incarnate, you need headshots. And this is a burst fire weapon. So that's easily charged. And when you activate it, it has 600 rounds in the magazine. S 600. Just think about that. And once you build up your stacks, just wipe everything in sight. And the Viral Hunter Munitions build. Pretty straightforward. 
bleeding enemies and we're dealing heat procs as well because when it's in incarnate mode it deals heat damage with a small small explosion so if enemies are clumped up they'll also get affected do you remember Torrid, where you don't need to get headshots to activate the Incarnate mode? Well, there's a secondary that also doesn't need headshots to activate Incarnate. That's the Prisma Angstrom. Using this one, that one, and this one. And this is the build you need. And just like the Latron, it ricochets off of surfaces. And this is the weapon that I mostly use when I'm fighting the 60 Eyes boss. Because it's, it's so brain dead. One shot instantly charge the Incarnate meter. And you just hold down the trigger. <laughs> it's that stupidly good. So... One shot. Incarnate meter filled. Activate it. You see how it's ricocheting off of enemies? And all these heat pronks are building up my Cascadia Flare. You shoot it on the ground, and it hits enemies. It's that great. I also recommend the Laetum. Just go with a crit Laetum. It's more versatile and more streamlined for every type of game mode. So yeah, for the evolutions, go for that one. This one that one and this one for this evolution you can either go with the headshot damage or headshots build up incarnate faster this is your basic build you can easily change this by replacing galvanized crosshairs with prime heated charge there you go this is what you can do and you can change this to cascadia flare incarnate mode active activate it oh yeah look at that damage Not all Kuva and Tenet weapons are forgotten. Here we have the Tenet Plasmere. It is a bonus toxin. The weapon is very easy and brain dead to use. And if you're using it with mag, it is even more powerful. Ricochets off of surfaces and has some nice body punch through. Remember, terrain and body punch through are two different things. Starting off with the Hunter Munitions build, simple. You just shoot into the row of enemies and they bleed to death. You don't even have to be good at aiming. You can shoot the floor and still hit enemies. Which is perfect for the Warframe community. This is the Viral Hunter Munitions build. While the Corrosive build is a lot more flexible. It's just raw damage. Anyway, this weapon is is ridiculously strong. Like, like super strong. Evolutions, you want this one. On ability cast, get additional multi-shot. You can do this by transference or using any operator ability or just use abilities in general and you want this one and then that one this weapon has a passive right there you shoot head you get increased fire rate ammo efficiency this only works for the regular mode by the way and bonus toxin damage this is the main build so when i hit the head now i have increased fire rates and i'm not consuming any ammo activate the incarna mode yeah oh yeah oh yeah oh yeah and for amazing secondaries, the Akukor. Now listen up, this weapon is only here because it's made even better with its augment. So if you do not have the augment, the weapon is not going to perform as good as it does. This gives you 240% bonus crit chance and status chance for each tendril spawn. What does that mean? It has a unique trait where kills generate tendrils. Not only does it give you those crit and status chance, it also has you never reload. Because let's be honest, you don't want to be running into any ammo issues. And that's why here is a juicy arm cannon you want to have in your arsenal. The Booba Nico. Booba Nico has an alternate fire that blows its load on enemies' faces. This load is viral. So you can prime enemies. Primary fire deals toxin damage. So this is your main hunting munitions build. No elemental mod needed because we have viral splooge on enemies. Your corrosive build. This one just needs an electric mod. Now we deal viral, corrosive, and electric. So yeah, it doesn't have trouble with ammo because it's a battery weapon. You splooge on enemies with the alternate fire and destroy them with your primary. And here we have the strewn prime. Evolution, that one, this one, and that one. And it's a simple viral hunter munitions build because it's, it's, it's viral hunter munitions, pretty brain dead. So you gotta shoot enemies faces to get incarnate meter and Mind you, you can end up one-shotting enemies and not get incarnate charge. Boom. Splooging. Splooging all over enemies. Big AoE explosion. That bleeds enemies. Moving on to the bombs. Yeah. Hey, why not the Naturuk? I don't want to be micromanaging a lot of things when it comes to weapons. And Naturuk and Sinta do have some micromanaging. But the Paris and Dread have something that the Naturuk and Sinta cannot do. And it's running the mod Split Flights, which is a very powerful multi-shot mod on bows. 
and not all bows can use them. You got this evolution, that evolution, and this evolution. Very straightforward. Split flights gives you increased multi-shot if you get headshots. And it also spreads your projectiles. That guy's just dying from the bleeds. Oh yeah, and look at split flights go to town. Beautiful. And all these projectiles, if you shoot them in the right angle, you can get all these headshots. And of course, Phantasma. You can use the Phantasma Prime or the regular Phantasma. Either one works just fine. It's alternate fire, splooges on enemies, and procs impact. Now that force proc impact is really good if you want to use it with primary exhilarate. And now your Phantasma can be a primer and something that gives you energy over time. This is the Viral Heat build and this is the Viral Electric build. I use this on Gyre. That's why I have the Prime Ravage because, you know, crits, more crit damage, even juicy. All right, alternate fire, splooges on enemies, seeking projectiles, right there hitting enemies. And it primes enemies for you. The weapon is innate radiation. And now you have a Viral and Heat build. I was talking about guns for quite a while. So what about melees? Now, if you're thinking, oh, have melees changed that much when it came to melee arcanes and Tenokai? No, no, the builds are still the same. Builds haven't changed much. It's just that now Tenokai gives you a little bit more utility. But if you're doing a lot of damage with your melee, Tenokai is pretty much not noticeable because you just kill enemies way too quickly for your Tenokai to be useful on newer enemies. Tenokai, of course, is very useful on incarnate melees because then it allows you to activate it without consuming your combo. And combo is very important for a lot of things. Heavy attacks and building up blood rush, weeping wounds. So all those slash melees that were very popular and very strong back in the days are still very strong and very useful to have. So like your Nakana, Reaper, Cronin, they're still very good. And of course, you can see we got the Glaive. Glaive just has and fallen off it's still very strong your go-to build here and this one doesn't even need an arcane but if you're going to deal with acolytes i would just put a melee exposure so you can deal rock corrosive damage on the acolytes without even needing to mod for it the explosions deal blast and force bleeds so you heavy attack and detonate charge detonate still a very strong combo till today and this is the combo heavy glaive using melee crescendo so Crescendo is usually built up by performing finishers or even ground finishers. If you have Vazarin, you can use the Ragdoll grouping and perform ground finishers on these enemies. Ash with his fourth ability is able to finish your enemies fairly quickly and it builds up initial combo. This is a glaive with 12 times infinite combo. Just remember to have reflex coil because even if you're throwing this weapon and it has infinite combo, it still consumes combo. So with Reflex Coil giving you some heavy attack efficiency, won't consume your entire ammo pool, so you don't have to wait for a really long time. So with a 12 times heavy attack... Oh, that was just a million bleeds right there. And here we have the dual E-Cores Incarnate. And for the evolution, use this one, that one, and this one. Here you have your traditional build using Swirling Tiger because this will force proc bleeds. The weapon has innate toxin, so it can combine with another element to give you whatever. Killing enemies will spawn toxin clouds that deal AoE damage and activate our incarnate. Look at that. Look at those toxin clouds. And this weapon is insanely strong with <coughs> Saren. Oh, just saying, just saying. So that's your basic traditional build. And this is with a magnetic primer using melee vortex. So you prime enemies with magnetic and we got the grouping. Now we have gas clouds all over. And the final one is using melee influence. This is a non-critical build. Just crazy electric and toxin procs. And even better with Saren. Just, I'm just saying, just, just Saren. The Zorus. Another type of glaive, but this is an electric glaive. And this glaive is only useful if you have the melee influence arcane. Its heavy attacks will force proc electric, triggering melee influence for even more AoE electric damage. Toss it and detonate. Look at that, look at that. And Zorus has the largest explosion radius out of all the glaives. Now the hate has taken the throne of the best scythe in the game. Use this evolution here, that evolution here, and this evolution. Now why did this turn into the best scythe? Well you can use it in both its normal mode and its incarnate mode. It's a slash based weapon and its incarnate mode allows you to throw projectiles that deal heat damage and IPS. And these projectiles that proc these IPS will allow you to build up combo fairly easy thanks to Relentless Combination. If you don't care too much about projectiles giving you combo, you can replace Relentless with Glider Might. Even more damage. Okay, I activated the Incarnate Mode and look at this. 
we can maintain our combo at 12 times with all these projectiles that we're throwing. And there we have some Tenokai. Boom. Heat and bleeds. You can prime enemies if you want. Look at that. Beautiful. You have melee contact and projectiles that throw out heat. And the Quanzas. The Quanzas is very simple. It, it's a war fan that you use for heavy attacks. It's not AoE, but it has some interesting gimmicks, which will be beneficial for you. Come here. If you ever wanted to one-shot Archons again, just use this war fan. Modded for radiation. Get yourself Zata's Whisper. And boom. This is your basic heavy attack build. And if you want, you can even put melee exposure. Just to have corrosive and force bleeds from its projectiles. Second loadout. This is your Archon Hunt build. Of course, you build up a little bit of combo by hitting some enemies. Activate a couple of abilities. Now you have radiation corrosive and projectiles that will destroy enemies. Why all the elemental damage increase? Because with Zanta's Whisper, you're going to increase its damage. And the projectiles that it throws count as multi-shot. So it's like the Kuvahek and Phalarx back in the days before they changed Archons. And this is the loadout that you use with Tenokai. Simple heavy attack. Force proc bleed and... That was a one shot, yeah. So if you want to do Archon Hunts, make sure you have Zanta's Whisper, a Rauta, because shooting enemies will build up some combo for you. It's simple, just a bunch of multi-shot fire rate, and don't forget Dexterity Arcane on both of your guns. So if you want easy combo, you can use something like Vazarin, group them up, and... And here, you got six times combo right there. And use Vazarin's first ability, and you also built up melee exposure. <laughs> And if you have Zanta's Whisper, that counts as an additional hit on your Rauta. So you can build up combo fairly quickly. Activate an ability. Quick headshot. And you don't have to use any type of exploits or bugs just to one-shot the Archons. And here we have the Tenant Livio. Mine is bonus magnetic. I would say go for bonus magnetic or electric. Because electric is actually pretty decent with AoEs. Unfortunately, as of yet, we don't have any good stances for two-handed Nakanas. This is the best two-handed Nakana in the game. Because it's very versatile and it pauses your combo as long as the melee is holstered. This is a very simple basic build using melee Vortex. You prime enemies and swing when Tenokai activates. It's insanely broken. Two-handed Nikanas and Scythe are the two weapons that have the biggest slash multiplier when you heavy attack. And having a lot of attack speed really benefits Tenokai. It's kind of funny remembering back then. Generally speaking, we think that attack speed as it is, is one of the bigger problems with melee and the type of gameplay it encourages. It doesn't let animations shine. It has little or no strategic use. Yeah, that was said. And all those weapons I showcased were the damage weapons that you want to have. But what about utility? You always want to have utility weapons. I did mention the Rauta earlier. This helps you build up combo without you attacking with your melee. Very useful in Archon hunts and other situations. Just make sure you have a bunch of fire rate, multi-shot, and punch through. And you can put some form so you can have better magazine and reload speed. Don't forget your new core with bonus magnetic, modded for viral heat. And now you have a bunch of status effects to prime enemies. Very good with melee vortex. You have your epitaph. This is insanely good. You get IPS, Blast, Cold without modding for it. And then you have your modded elements. And the Grimoire. This is insanely good. It's one of the best utility type of weapons out there. If you want bonus strength, you got it. You want bonus efficiency, you got it. You want an armor strip. Yeah. You got it. Also, I said this weapon is for utility, but I have a build video for you coming soon that uses this weapon as an AoE, DPS, and armor stripping tool. Stay tuned. And the Prados, yes, as a utility weapon, is one of the best utility weapons just because of its sprint speed slide and its Parker velocity. And I would highly recommend this as a utility weapon over the Enidem. Enidem is more of a damaging weapon than a utility weapon. If you want a Tomfa for DPS, I would highly say use the Cronin or the Prisma Oma. They're way better for DPS than the Prados. I just found Parker Velocity and Sprint Speed to be way more useful than Void Sling. Void Dash was just far superior. I feel sorry for anyone who didn't get to experience one of the best movement techs in the game. And if you want Armor Strip on a weapon without using green shards, you can have it on the Vasilok. This thing shoots out 9 pellets that can Armor Strip targets using Shattering Impact. This is the build I would use for Eidolons and even Disruption if you want an Armor Strip without wasting a Helmet Slot for Armor Stripping or Archon Shards to get the bonus Corrosive stack. And finally, the Ceramic Dagger. This is very useful as a stat stick and some other funny shenanigans that you can use. So yeah, these are the must-have weapons in your arsenal that can have you do all the content without ever worrying about running out of ammo, not doing enough damage, and not forcing you into a specific playstyle.
as they're all very versatile and useful for any day-to-day -day case and game mode that you want to do. Anyway, folks, that has been it for me. I do hope you enjoyed this video and learned something from it. And if you did, please feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content streams and so much more. Do refer to the description. Thanks for watching, and as always, peace. Bye-bye now.